Okay, so we'll read chapter two today uh, to give a little summary of what has happened thus far in our book. Our main character has uh, had her mom and her dad lost at sea. Our main character's name is Primrose. And uh, everyone else thinks they've passed away, but she does not admit that. We've learned that uh, we've met Miss Perfidy, who was her usual babysitter and her neighbor that took care of her for a while. All of Miss Perfidy's stuff smells like mothballs. Uh, we also met Miss Honeycutt, who is the school counselor. And Miss Honeycutt has a unique personality. Um, and uh, has kind of been active in this situation. And we met Uncle Jack, who has moved to Coal Harbor and is going to take care of Primrose. So that's kind of where we are. And there was also a, a uh, recipe for carrots and apricot. Chapter 2, A Move to Uncle Jack's. Through the rest of the summer, I continued to float. Uncle Jack asked me if I minded moving, but I could not shake the sense that none of it mattered very much. Well, I said to Miss Perfidy as Uncle Jack helped me to carry my things to his car. I guess this is... But she left the room as soon as Uncle Jack was out the door, so I was muttering goodbye to an empty room. When school started, my real troubles began. Miss Honeycutt had taken children out of the classroom in groups to counsel them about my bereavement. I wasn't supposed to know about this, but I found out one day after school when, as I tried to slip away unseen through the playground, a group of girls began to follow and make jeering noises at me. I could hear them giggle. When I turned, there they were, two feet away, crushed together like a bunch of asparagus. Recipe to follow. Asparagus, I thought. It had been a long time since I'd had asparagus. I knew just how my mother made it because I had seen her make it a thousand times. In the spring, my father would drive down island and buy it off the farm stands by the bagful. Uncle Jack hadn't made green vegetables since I had moved in, but I bet he would like asparagus the way my mother cooked it. One of the girls detached herself while I was thinking about this and said, We were just wondering, Primrose, why aren't you wearing black? Miss Honeycutt told the whole class we had to be nice to you because you are bereaved. What do you mean? I asked. Miss Honeycutt sent you to the library that day so she could tell us that you were in mourning. But you don't seem to be mourning. We think it's time you face the fact that your parents are dead. Another one of the girls giggled. I turned my back and started walking away faster, but they kept following me. We just want you to know that we're here for you when you begin the mourning process, said another, hot on my heels. Miss Honeycutt said it would happen any time now. She said you would have tics, moods, and poor study habits. My mother says, how come your mother didn't stay at home with you instead of going out into that storm? These sound like nice friends. I don't think so. I began to run. I could hear them running behind me. Then one girl called out, yeah, and your uncle's a developer. A developer, I thought to myself as I headed onto the main street. I didn't know what it was, but it didn't sound like a good thing. I cut across a parking lot and was running down the alley between the girl on the red swing and the drugstore when a hand reached out and I was pulled into a warm kitchen and safety. I stood panting and stared at my savior, Kate Bowser, who sucked on a cigarette and looked down at me through narrowed eyes. Miss Bowser opened and operated the restaurant. She dragged a stool up to the stove for me, continued smoking and making waffles, and listened to my tale of woe. She made about a million waffles while I sat there. She had to make about a million every day because at the girl on the red swing, they served everything on a waffle. Not just the kind of food that went with waffles, not just ham and eggs on a waffle or strawberries on a waffle. No, at the girl on the red swing, if you ordered a steak, it came on a waffle. If you ordered fish and chips, it came on a waffle. If you ordered waffles, they came on a waffle. Miss Bowser said it gave the restaurant class. 
Also, she liked to give the customers a little something extra. She tossed me a cup of waffles and a glass of iced tea. I said I had the feeling that no one was going to forgive me for not falling apart at my parents' disappearance. Kid, I'll tell you what no one in this town can forgive, and that's that your mother loved your father enough to follow him out into that storm. Now, that's true love, and it's as rare as rare can be. Most of the kids in this town don't have two parents. Look around. They've got one dead, one and one alive one, or they've got two divorced ones who don't talk to each other, or they've got a mom and a bird of the night dad who sang one sweet song and never appeared again. And of those who have two parents, how many of those wives would put on rain gear and follow their husbands out into the dark chaos of the storm, forsaking all else? It makes me weepy. She put down her cigarette, which had about a four-inch piece of ash dangling at the end of it, wiped a tear out of her eye, swore for emphasis, and took the waffles out of the waffle maker. I see, then, that I am in a for a rough ride, I said, munching my waffles. Oh, yes, agreed Miss Bowser, stirring the waffle batter. One of the girls' mothers said that my mother should have stayed at home with me. I saw Miss Bowser look irritated plenty of times in the years to come, but I never saw her look so angry as she did right then. She dropped her spatula and said, Why don't you get that uncle of yours? What's his name? Jack? Yeah, Jack. I've seen him around town. He's pretty sizable. Why don't you take him over to the schoolyard and have him kick the crap out of those little stinkers? Such a thought tickled me, though I realized it was com completely impractical. The last thing I wanted to do these days was make any more waves. And at heart, I was a pacifist. Well, not at heart. My mother says no one is a pacifist at heart. At heart, we're all violent, raging wolves. But in our actions, we can be pacifists. My mom and dad and I discussed this once when we were all sitting around the hearth. We had gone on a vacation without me. They had gone on a vacation without me for a whole week. And when they got back, we decided to have concentrated family time. So we made dinners in the fire, so we made fires in the fireplace and sat around them together after dinner. At first, we were just happy to be together, but our lively discussions became less lively and gathering at the hearth began to seem like a chore and finally, though no one would admit it, it became boring. Being together, like being able to see some certain stars only with your peripheral vision, isn't something you can create. It's just something that happens to you. Miss Bowser started to get busy chopping things. I sat quietly finishing my iced tea and writing down the asparagus recipe in my mother's memo pad. I decided to use the pad to collect any recipes of my mother's I remembered or any new one I came across that she might like. Then I put it back in my pocket, thanked Miss Bowser for the waffles, and sticking my head out the door to make sure the coast was clear, headed home. The best way to make asparagus. Snap off the ends of your asparagus. They will break off at the woodeny parts, leaving you with the tender edible stalks. Put them in a pan of water to soak. Dump the dirty water and put the asparagus in a pan of ice water with a whole tray of cubes floating in it. While they're getting cold, heat a big pan of water to boiling. Put the asparagus in the boiling water. It will stop boiling for a minute when the cold asparagus shocks it. Leave the asparagus in until the water begins boiling again. Then remove it immediately and dunk the asparagus into the ice water again. It will be cooked perfectly and you can eat it with your fingers because, as my mother always says, even kings and queens do. I like that chapter. Um, for our response, if you could please describe Miss Bowser. Who is she? Where does she work? What does she do as a job? And if anyone makes asparagus, let me know. <laughs>